So we are going to talk about the Holy Spirit. And this is a lesson concerning the Holy Spirit. And I just want to quickly note here that just listening to a lesson about the Holy Spirit may not constitute just the, the enough of what we are supposed to do. The Holy Spirit is, is, is experiential. You have to experience Him. Not just listening in and learning with our heads, our minds. So this lesson, after this lesson that I'm going to present, I urge you and strongly encourage every listener to go and experience the Holy Spirit. So I'm just going to be bringing uh, pointers, a few pointers, some from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the subject of this, of this talk here is the Holy Spirit in the New Testament believers. So it's me and you and all Christians. So uh, quickly, I'm just going to start this lesson so it doesn't go very long and say, we meet the Holy Spirit in the book of Genesis chapter one. The very first verse we hear about the Holy Spirit. He, he is that important. He is that involved. We hear the Bible saying, and in the beginning, God created the world, but there was a problem. It was formless, void, and dark. And immediately, we see the Holy Spirit is hovering over the waters. What was he doing? What was the Spirit of God doing? God would say things would appear, but then there is, there is more to be done to bring form and to remove the voidness and to remove the darkness from the earth. So the Holy Spirit is hovering over the waters, over the waters, bringing form to the, to the universe, more so to the planet Earth, removing the voidness. You know, it, it had no shape and it was just void. No, it was not beautiful to behold, bringing order, making it beautiful. And then darkness, separating darkness from the light. That was the work of the Holy Ghost. So if the, the Holy Ghost is very much involved, God the Father gives the word that is Jesus Christ through him he create, but the Holy Ghost has the work of bringing form, removing the voidness and removing darkness. So that's how important the Holy Ghost is. So you, you can't ignore him. So having brought that example and, and said he is from the beginning, I want to go to, to, to another Old Testament verse. We spoke about Genesis 1 to 1. I'm taking you to the next verse. That is Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. And here we find one governor of Israel called Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was unable to rebuild the temple that was, had been destroyed. And when they came back from captivity to Jerusalem, he was trying to rebuild the temple. In two years time, he laid the foundation. But from there, the project was stalled. He could not move forward because of resources. And only resources because of opposition. So thereafter, 17 years, the project of God, the temple of God was just laying idle. It could not be rebuilt. He could not continue. And God sends a prophet to Zechariah, uh, to Zerubbabel, to tell him something very important. Listen to this. God told Zerubbabel that the temple will be rebuilt. He will help him to build the stalled project. For 17 years it was stalled. You know what he said? It is not by your power or might, it is by my spirit. The spirit of God will help you do the stalled project. And sure enough, in four years time after that prophecy, he completed the temple. So what does that mean? God is was telling Zerubbabel, it's not our efforts, it's not our toiling, it's not our, our breaking our heads, it's not 
all those things that count it is a spirit of god so the spirit of god getting involved in our efforts in our works and our desires makes us accomplish that which we could not accomplish he is the power behind everything so we understand i've just brought these two there are so many examples but i just chose the two the genesis one to show you how important the earth we look at the things we look at the holy ghost set them in order Remo removing disorder he brought them in order and form was found and the voidness the nothingness disappeared and the darkness was separated from the from the light I want to believe he put it far, far away, millions and millions of light years away in black holes. So we have light. Anyhow, having said that, then we go to Zechariah. Then we understand God is telling us, by our own efforts, we, we, we can but accomplish very little and we will be stalled. But when the Holy Spirit is involved, the project that were stalled for many years comes to life in a very short time. So with these two examples, we're seeing in the Old Testament, God is God and the Bible is telling us the Holy Spirit is very, very key in everything. So having said that, I just want to, want to move quickly to the New Testament because we we're talking about the importance of the Holy Spirit to the New Testament believers, to me, you, and everyone else. We quickly find, when we read the book of Romans 8 and 9, the Bible clearly, clearly says that without the Spirit of Jesus Christ, you are not His. I am not His. That is a shocking statement. I would say this is one of the statements that this should rattle everybody. This is a statement in the Bible that should just, I think it's a benchmark of Christianity. You know, I call myself Christian. We call ourselves Christian. Is there, is, is there, is there, is there evidence that we are Christian? Because we, all, we can all say that. I think clearly the Holy Spirit through Apostle Paul in Romans 8, 9, he gives us that identity. What's the idea of a Christ, Christian? What's the identity like we carry identity cards you know what i mean like to identify or a passport to say you belong to a country so what's the identity that you're a christian it is in romans 8 9 5 why without the spirit of jesus christ you cannot be his so that means if christ were to come today how would he know that you belong to him he would he would assess if you have the holy spirit in your heart if you don't, you don't belong to him. And that tells me when Jesus, you know, if you go to the gospel and when the Lord said, I did not know you. And we, 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 we can go and claim we did this, we did that. We preached, we prophesied, we cast out demons. If he says, I did not know you, why would, would he say that? He said, because they did not do the will of the Father. If they were not doing the will of the Father, then what was wrong with them? They did not have the Holy Spirit. So they had other spirit. They were doing it for different motives. And they were void or devoid of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the identity of Christianity. Ponder and think about this. Am I a Christian? Then do I have the Holy Spirit? So if you ask that question, and this is a key question in, in order, we should not lie to ourselves like, oh, you know, just be there and think, let's flow with the flow. You have to have the Holy Spirit so that you can be his. Romans 8, 9. Now, I want to, um, I give you two examples from the Old Testament. I've given you an example of who the Holy Spirit is in the New Testament. So without him, then we are not even Christians. We don't belong to Christ. Christ would deny us. Then I'm going to into the book of Acts. You have all read the book of Acts of Apostles. But in the very beginning, that is in chapter 1, and you find that in verse 4, there is clear, very, very clear instruction to the disciples and apostles 
that they should not do the work of God. They should not start the work of God before they have the power of the Holy Spirit. So this is Jesus. He has resurrected. He, he has shown them evidence that I am the Lord. I have conquered. I, I, have, I, have, I have stepped on Satan's the serpent's head. I have conquered death. You are my, I, I need you to preach the ends of the world. He told them in Matthew, remember, end of the book. But then here he is. He's telling them, yeah, but not yet. I'm ascending up. I will send the promise. I told you guys I must go, so he must come. So listen to me, guys. Do not start any Christian work before you get endowed by the Holy Spirit. This is God Almighty telling us, do, don't go preach. Don't go do anything. Don't go witnessing. Don't, don't go uh, casting out demons yet. Do not go healing people yet. Do not go, you know, witnessing and testifying because you, you need something. If you, if you went before, if the, if the apostles did not listen and went before, just tell me what would have happened. They would have definitely attracted serious spiritual attacks in their lives, even their deaths, and they would not have done it effectively. They would have preached, they would have cast out demons, they would have done what they saw for three years with Jesus, but they would have lacked something, the force behind it. So they would have been making empty prophecies, empty promise, promises, they would have been, you know, like not effective, and then they would attract serious attacks on themselves. And on the last day, if they had not done that, they went to Jesus and said, we prophesied. We, we cast out demons. He'll say, I did not know you. Go back to Romans 8, 9. That's the identity. If we, we are to be known by the Lord, if he were to know you personally, uh, if you want Jesus to know you personally, then you have to have something that belongs to him. He must have deposited something. If you, like, let me ask you an example, just to make this very, very simple and clear. If you went to a bank to open an account, you need to deposit something. Open an account and deposit. You can say, if I ask you, uh, Naomi, what's your bank? You could tell me uh, it's standard chartered. Why? Because you have an account there and you can claim, oh, there is a deposit there. They owe me something. Same with Jesus. The Holy Ghost has been deposited. It's the first reward a Christian gets from God the Father. And this is like a deposit. God has put a deposit in us. His deposit is the Holy Ghost. And this is just to tell to tell us that you have everlasting life. This is just a deposit to show you that you'll get the full thing. That's heaven. So the Holy Ghost is the first fruit. It's the first reward we get as a deposit. And that's the identity. That's the identity that identifies you and from everybody else. It's not naming a denomination. So if I came here and said I belong to a church called ABC, that doesn't make me a Christian. Just because I go to church and the, the pastor knows you and people know you around or claim to, that's, that's not the, the true mark of a Christianity. Go and read the Bible. You must have that deposit of the Father, of the Holy Ghost, that identifies you as a Christian. And then remember, do not do the work of Christ without him. So he's that important. If Christ is, is stopping us and telling us, hey guys, before you do that, you need training. But like before you, you, you go exercise your career, you need training, right? It, it, because it's a prerequisite of the job. So the prerequisite or the requirement of a Chris, Christian first is to do the work of Christ is the Holy Ghost. See how important it is? And as I said in the beginning, just a lesson on Facebook about the Holy Ghost and understanding is not enough. You need to experience because the Holy Ghost is experiential. You have to experience Him. So I hope I, I am clear the importance of the Holy Ghost in the New Testament church. Then we have talked about the work of the work of the Holy Ghost in ministry. What he told the apostles. What about Christian life? We are supposed to walk in the Holy Ghost and live in the Holy Ghost. We get that in Galatians 5, if you read 16 up to 22. We walk in the Spirit. How is what's, What do you mean we walk in the Spirit? To walk in the Spirit 
means you operate because now he's already deposited in you. Like, how do you walk with somebody? You're, you're, if you and your sister are walking, you talk, you discuss issues. That's how we are supposed to, 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 to walk with him. You, you talk, you converse to the, to the Holy Ghost. You talk to him throughout the day. Like, you know, like when you're in the malls, you talk to the Holy Ghost, you ask him something. You're, you're going to buy some, some clothes and you don't know which one. Hey, Holy Ghost, help me choose a nice one here. You're going to do something. You, you walk with him throughout. So that's walking in the Holy, Holy Spirit. It also means the Holy Spirit, you know, as we know in the Bible, this is very well known. He has gifts that he gives people when we receive the Holy Ghost. We know the nine gifts dis discussed in the Bible. I'm not going to repeat that because most people know it. You operate in, the, in those gifts. If he has given you tongues, you speak in tongues. Uh, and you excel in the gift. If I give you a gift, like of running, you need to, to exercise. Um, you know, the, the, these, these fastest running folks, like Bolt, from Jamaica, he had to. He has a gift. He has a talent in him. But then he need to exercise to to excel in it. So, like if you have the gift, the gifts of tongue, you need to exercise that gift of tongue and, and grow in it. Like Paul had so much grown in it. Apostle Paul, he said, "I speak more than any other in the, in tongues." Then he said, I, "I I sing in tongues, but I also like to pray with my mind." So he he could stop and pray with his understanding. So you can play, you can pray with understanding, and you can pray in the spirit. So he would stop and pray with understanding. He could sing in tongues and stop, and also sing in his in his regular language. So walking in the spirit means you always communicating with him, asking him to help you pray, because the Bible says he helps us to pray, and you have to exercise in his gifts another thing i want to say is living in the spirit uh, galatians 5 there it differentiates the two walking and we talked about it's always being in spirit praying in spirit uh talking to, to using his gifts healing people going and casting out demons the works of the holy ghost is walking with him so if you're walking with him he will do what he does what does he do? By the way, I think this is very important right now to bring up what he, he is doing. And we'll go back to the ministry of Jesus Christ. In the ministry of Jesus Christ, when he was baptized by John the Baptist, he started his ministry. His ministry immediately is doing miracles. And people came and questioned him. And he said, question that authority. How are you able to do these? What did he say? He said, I am... if." I am doing this by the finger of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. That means the kingdom of God has come to you guys and you have no choice. Come into the kingdom. So the kingdom of God, when we say let your kingdom come, we, what we, we, we are trying to say is let the Holy Spirit come and dwell because the Holy Spirit is God. God with us. When we say Emmanuel, when Jesus left, he's in heaven. How is Jesus in you? Jesus can only be in you. He, he gives you part of him. That's the Holy Ghost. So what, when we are talking about the Holy Spirit is a part of God in us. It's Emmanuel, God with us. So he, that's called the kingdom of God. When you say, let your kingdom come, it's fill me with your Holy Spirit. That's what it means. Because that's what Jesus said. The kingdom of God, if I am doing these miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit, whom he called the finger of God, that means the kingdom of God is here so simply said the holy ghost is a kingdom of god and i wanted to say his works are whatever jesus when you read the gospel you can tell the works of jesus he was preaching he would preach he would cast out demons he would uh, he would uh, uh, pray for the sick and heal them of diseases and infirmities he restored people and he raised the dead he did all those miracles that the church and you and me should be doing we should be doing we, we can do no no less or or more we have to do we can do more actually so let me take that statement back we can do greater works so without the holy ghost holy ghost does that so walking with the holy ghost is doing what he does when he is inside of you 
and I differentiated living in the spirit. Living in the sp spirit is is you um, bearing the fruits of the spirit. Like people should know. When I looked at, let, let me take an example of one person who is online right now. Lane, if Lane, I looked at you and I found you have a lot of love and faith, I would know you have the Holy Spirit. You should have a fruit that can be plucked by people. If Jesus comes and looks at me and asks me, where are the fruits? What fruits do you think I should be bearing? It's the fruits of the Holy Ghost. So he should be able to pluck pluck faith out of me, pluck self-control out of me. And, and the more I bear, the more I can feed others, not only me would I be operating in self-control, I can teach others. They can come to me and eat a fruit. That's why we are supposed to bear fruits. So when I have the Holy Ghost, and I have the fruits of the Spirit, like faith. I can share that faith like I am doing here and help somebody else because they can eat of that fruit. So that's living in the Spirit to do the work of Christ. So in a Christian life, the Holy Ghost is very, very important. I can, with the Holy Ghost, I can go long, but I just wanted to show you the importance of the Holy Spirit from the Old Testament even in creation, like day one. And what God told Zerubbabel, he told Zerubbabel that without the Spirit of God, it's too hard, but with the Spirit of God, every mountain will become plain. He said, the mountain, you know what was a mountain in Zerubbabel's case? He, he, his project of building the temple of God was stalled. He said that mountain will be just leveled. When the Holy Ghost, my spirit, is by my spirit, says, says the Lord. It's by my spirit, not by power or might, your might and power, because he, he, he was a governor. So the Spirit of God comes and makes the hard things easy for Christians. In the New Testament, we have understood, and I'm trying to summarize here, that identity, you can't be a Christian without the Holy Ghost. And we, we, we suffer the risk of going to the Lord on the last day and he say, saying, I do not know you. Operating without, 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 without the, the, the real power and the gifts that we need to. Not walking in the spirit and living in the spirit. Because if you did walk and live in the spirit, you can't do your will. You can't do the will of the world. You will do the will of the Father. Remember, they're being rejected because they do not do the will of the Father. How do you do the will of the Father? It's the Holy Ghost telling you, do not go to the left, do not go to the right, hey, turn, turn. You know, in the book of Isaiah, in those days, you will hear a voice that's the Holy Ghost. Do not turn to the left, do not go there. Uh, I don't think you should be doing that. Uh, the Holy Ghost will work with your conscience to tell you what things are right or wrong. And you, you will repent if you, you failed or, or not go there. Hey, do not do that. Hey, do not open that page. I, 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 uh, that page... And if we do it, we'll be grieving him because he, he lives in us. So that's, that's how you do the will of the Father. The Holy Ghost, walking with him, talking to you, confirming who you are, confirming what you sh where you should be and what you should be doing. So he is that important. He is that important. And I want to go to the last section. How do you receive Jesus Christ? How do you receive this gift? And we understand it's... God wants to give us the Holy Spirit. How do we know that? Because Christ Jesus himself said it. He said, uh, I'm trying to look for, yeah, it's Luke. I wrote it down here, 10, 13. Jesus said, the Father is really, really, really willing to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. So the, I think the, the reason we do not have the Holy Spirit is because we haven't asked the Father. We haven't asked and if we have, how much desire do you desire him? Because I think God is going to give us to the degree that we are thirsty. Jesus said, come unto me, you who thirst and labor. I'll give you rest. He told the Samaritan woman, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me to give you the living waters. That, the living waters is the Holy Ghost. Jesus, somewhere he said, if you follow me and, and, and obey my commands within you, shall flow rivers of living waters. That's the Holy Ghost. So if you're, you know, you, know you're, you drink the water you need in accordance with the degree of your thirst. 
if you went out running or working in the farm and you came sweating and you have, you're dehydrated, you'll take a lot of water because you need that. You need that much amount of water. If you're, you, you, you're not thirsty, you might just take a sip. You know, I've, I've seen kids, you know, being told in school, take water, they, they don't like it. And water is good for our health. You see, I, I'm just trying to express that the degree you're thirsty is the degree that the Holy Ghost will be poured into you. So have you asked the Father to send the Holy Ghost to you? If you did, did you just say, Oh, Father, give me the Holy Ghost, thank you, and went? How, how thirsty were you? How earnestly did you insist that God baptizes you with the Holy Ghost? Remember, Jesus is a baptizer with fire and the Holy Ghost. He will baptize you, but, but you have to ask. He will baptize you according to the degree you're very, very thirsty and you need it. So I, I, I want to say here, Receiving the Holy Ghost is not the Father's restraining it. It is our desire and us not asking. We simply don't have the Holy Ghost to the degree that we should because we haven't asked. And if we did, what degree did you ask? Because there is a measure. The Bible has taught us that the Holy Spirit is released according to the measure we hear some people had the Holy Ghost without measure. He had, like Jesus Christ, he, had, he was full of the Holy Ghost. Even a woman touching the hem of the garment, power just comes out of the cloth, the robe that he's wearing. That's without measure. But for us, maybe a little bit measure because we don't even desire. That's why we can't prophesy. We can't cast a simple, uh, even a demon. We, we can't. You know, we, we are weak because the degree of the Holy Ghost we have could be this small. Maybe just for your conscience to tell you when you're wrong. But the, the, the John the Baptist was full of the Holy Ghost. And he received it when he was in his mother's womb, six months pregnant. He had to move. When the Holy Ghost came upon him in the stomach of his mother, he moved. It was it was physical. The Holy Ghost comes physically sometimes with signs, like you know, physical signs. Though he's a spirit, we can't see him. He likes to to show the evidence that he's there, and his evidence is a gift, speaking in tongues, casting out demons, wind, fire. Uh, you feel some people will say, "I feel something." There is an evidence. He likes to give the evidence. John the Baptist had to move and kick his mother. He had a huge measure of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus calls him the, 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 the biggest, the greatest prophet. Can you imagine why would he be the greatest? Because he had more measure of the Holy Ghost than all the predecessors in the Old Testament. So it's, the Holy Ghost is that important. It made John the Baptist the greatest prophet. So I just wanted to say, we do not have the Holy Ghost because we have not desired enough, prayed enough, insisted enough insists it's not a one-time thing if god has to give you his himself the best the holy ghost is the best he can give us money he can give us education he can give us all those stuff you know like clothes and and stuff but those are man-made things like a car it's a man-made thing uh but when god is giving himself that is himself how much earnestly do we need to seek him and desire that so we do not have the Holy Ghost because we have not asked. The second one is you can receive the Holy Ghost by laying of hands. If you meet someone who has a Holy Spirit, lays hands on you, who has a great measure, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit as well. And this we read in Acts 8, 17. I give these Bible verses so you can verify. Do not take God's message from anyone if you can't verify it in the Bible. So go back. Listen to it, verify. Acts 8, 17 is Peter and John. They laid hands on people and people received the gifts of the Spirit. The evidence was right there. So you can receive it. But that tells me that these people were ready and, 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 and yarning to receive the Holy Ghost. Number two is, number three to receive the Holy Ghost is listening to the gospel. Like I am preaching right now, you can receive the Holy Spirit. You find this in Acts 10, 44. Peter preaching and in the middle of the sermon ooh, the Holy Ghost just comes and people are going 
in a good crazy prophesying praying in tongues receiving the holy ghost uh, uh so listening to the gospel like i am preaching right now you might receive a small measure just a little more measure of the holy ghost but if you were really desiring that god can hit you with his holy spirit and increase the measure of the holy ghost i think i have tried because I, as i said a lesson about the holy spirit listening in me you know you and me engaging and listening and saying yeah yeah won't it's not enough you gotta be filled you have to experience the holy spirit you got to experience the holy spirit i think i have delivered the the pointers that i wanted to bring i tried to keep it as brief but very very specific to the point as i could and the holy ghost i'm just going to summarize here for someone who is joining late the holy ghost find him in genesis we find god speaking to zerubbabel in zachariah that without the holy ghost it's 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 going to be mountains after mountains after mountains but with the holy ghost by my spirit says the lord every mountain will become plain plain means level it will be easier with the holy ghost yes and we we just chose those two examples we came to the new testament talked about identity talked about jesus telling them do not work for me until i give you the engine power the holy ghost so you you can't even that's why becoming a christian for most of us is so so difficult because it's a mountain it's a mountain to pray it's a mountain to fast it's a mountain to to be to have self control temptation it's a mountain everything is a mountain even our 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 own lives our businesses are just mountains just to get a customer <laughs> it's it's such a mountain just 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 to eat bread is a mountain just just to 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 survive just to to finish your education is a mountain what if we were full of the holy ghost like like zerubbabel the temple will be finished in 4 years what was stalled for 17 years got done huge temple in 4 years you know the education you're trying to achieve for 10 years with the holy ghost it, it can shorten that just just two years and this this you know the the marriage you're waiting for for so long get the holy ghost see the your mountain becoming level and and talk to god with the bible you told uh, zerubbabel that mountains will be leveled but by my spirit you have to receive the holy ghost see the life christianity will will become easy uh most of the things we suffer will become easy and the work of god let's talk about the spiritual part of it now will be so easy the demons if you could not cast out a simple demon you know uh, satan sends a, a, a tiny uh goblin to just mess you up you can't cast that out what if you find the hard demons to come out like jesus said this one needs prayer and fasting you won't be you won't be so see prayer and fasting is where we go and plead to god give me a greater measure of the holy spirit So when you see people around people don't have the same measure of the holy spirit some have this much some have this much some have this much some have this much it all depends with the eagerness you ask the father to bless you with especially for you and me we need to ask some people just got it by prophecy because like John did not pray for it John the Baptist he received in the womb because there 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 was a very specific prophet and God wanted to do something through him Samson Samson received as well in that manner some because of God's predestination will receive but if you're not part of that you need to ask for it i've given you the knowledge i've given you the importance i have preached this it's up to you now to go and say Jesus baptize me with the holy spirit and give me in greater measure so that all the mountains will become leveled so i can be able to pray effectively so that i can be able to intercede for my family effectively the prayers that we have been praying some of us even a common cold you know 
were not even able to pray off a common cold. How are you going to pray for AIDS? How are you going to pray for Ebola? You know what I mean? That, that, that There is a level, Jesus said, this one needs prayers, fasting, and infilling of the Holy Ghost at a greater measure. That's why some can resurrect, uh, resurrect the dead. But some can't even pray for a sick pet. Your cat is sick, can't even pray to get it healed. It dies off. And I'm not saying this to put us down to say how, how, how bad we are, but I'm just saying you have to desire a greater measure of the Holy Spirit. And the more you desire, it's pro proportional to how the Father is going to release him under you. I am done here and I thank God for those who joined me here is a pretty important lesson not not only a lesson I want you to go and experience I want you to go and walk in the Holy Ghost allow him to tell you hey, do not go here converse with him he'll use your conscience you will know the Holy Ghost tells you hey you have a journey you want to go to a certain place somehow he stops you because that car is going to have an accident that kind of walk with the Holy Ghost, close. I want to go and preach. I do not go and preach there. Paul, you can read the Holy Ghost stops him to go preach. That's a kind of a level of walking with the Holy Ghost we need. And be happy and desire the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Be, 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 be desirous of the higher gifts. Be desire. Show God that I need this. I, Father, I need this. Lord, I need this. If you have kids, you know how they insist. I need the chocolate. I need the chocolate. They irritate us to the level that you have to buy out of anger. And God is not bothered by you messing him up, not allowing him, open this door, give me bread. My friend is outside and he came to visit me and I have no bread. Give me bread. And I was like, ah, oh, no, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. No, 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 give me bread. I am sleeping. The king, the, the owner of the house is, is saying, I am sleeping. I'm No, I have a friend. And because of the insistence of that woman, and she had a friend, the owner of the house opened the door and said, take this bread, go, I want to sleep. Jesus told us to insist, to pray and insist in not I'm saying this very loosely don't give God rest not that he needs rest but that's what I mean pray pray push 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 you will not receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the attitude that you're okay with the attitude mm, the Holy Ghost is just a man is just a, an, um, a sentence in the church we mention him in the books we talk to him in the in the we talk to him like mm, the Holy Ghost. It's just a name. It's just a cliche. No, you have to experience him. You have to experience him. And the measure will depend on you. How thirsty. And I told you, you can just simply pray and receive the baptism by yourself. Or find an anointed servant. First, but it'll depend with your desire. Even though I am anointed, as much as I'm anointed to lay hands, if I came to someone who who, who, you know, who is not desirous of the Holy Ghost, they, they won't receive or they will receive this much. But if you're crazy, it's all about you. The person laying hands on you who is also anointed, it will be easy. You'll receive the measure you want. Also, listening to the Word of God day in, day out, when servants like me, like someone else, come out, a lot of them. There are a lot of God is, has a lot of voices on the internet and everywhere. Listening, just listening in, you will receive a measure. If you had that measure, it increases every day. So listening to the word of God being preached, the true word of God, and you as well reading the word of God. But as I said, when you read the word of God, you need the Holy Spirit to interpret it for you. So seek to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Very important in the New Testament in this age. And I will conclude with something else that I wanted to say here. That, But this is for me. In the book of the Salonians, it says there is a person called the restrainer of the Antichrist. There is someone who is restraining the Antichrist to be revealed in the world. And the Bible says in the Thessalonians that once the restrainer is taken away, the Antichrist will come. The beast system, what we call the beast system. Personally, I believe it is the Holy Spirit in Christians. 
it is the Holy Spirit in Christians. The only reason the Antichrist, he is trying, he's been trying for a very, very long time, and now even more, he's not completely revealed and with his marks and all that, is because of the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost is taken away, when his work is done, and I believe it's when Jesus said, when the gospel is preached to everyone, when that work is done, it's work of the Holy Ghost. And now the Holy Ghost is done. I preach to whomsoever I wanted to. And those who are saved are saved. And he is taken away. The Antichrist will show up. That's, see, you see the Holy Ghost from Genesis. And we see him in the end before Antichrist's error comes in. I personally believe the rapture or going up, being caught up, it's when the Holy Ghost in me and in all, because the Holy Ghost is not just existing in void. In, in, he has to use a medium. That's how the things of the Spirit works. He uses you, precious joy. He uses me. He can't just work in a vacuum like, oh, you know, he works through somebody or something he chooses, a medium. So when we are raptured and the Holy Ghost is no longer on earth, the, the Antichrist will not be restrained. So right now he's being restrained only by the Holy Spirit. That's how key and important the Holy Ghost is. Remember, Jesus is not here on the earth. You know, some people say, oh, I, I walk with Jesus. Jesus is in heaven on the right hand of God, of majesty, ruling and reigning over authorities, principalities, over all the kingdoms, over you and me. The only way we can say we have Jesus is by his spirit. So when you have the Holy Ghost in the heart, the Bible says, Christ lives in me through faith. When you believe, he sends his spirit. That's Jesus in you. So I have Jesus, not Jesus himself because he's God in heaven. Jesus' spirit. Without the Holy Ghost, we can't even say we are Christians. You know who we are or who we will be? We'll be religious. We'll just be religious people. Praying to a God that we do not know, like the Samaritan woman. She's doing traditions, customs of the of the denomination, customs of the church. We do this, we stand here, we kneel here, we say this because you'll be, we, you, you will be just doing religion. Like the Samaritan, oh, we pray in this mountain. When, the, when, uh, when we have uh, protocols and motions, this is what we do. Praying to a God you do not know personally. And God is personal, a personal God. He says... Jesus told the Samaritan, you pray to a God you do not know, but we know. Why? We have the Holy Spirit. We worship him in spirit and in truth. When you have the Holy Ghost, you worship a God you know. He's God in you. Heaven is in the heart. He's there. Heaven, heaven, heaven starts this side, guys. Not when you die, you know, like heaven is in your heart. Because only when the Holy Spirit is in there. Because when the Holy Spirit is in there, it means God the Father, Jesus Christ has made their abode in you. He said, if you love me, me and my father will come and make an abode in you by the spirit of God, the oneness of God. I think I have said it enough. We do not want to be religious people who get denied entry when we die. We, oh, man, I've been doing church. I've been doing the activities. I've been doing the, what the church told me to do. Don't, don't do, don't, don't do, don't play religion. Religion is dangerous because you worship something you do not know. And when it's all said and done, done, you realize he doesn't know you. It's shocking. I know I know most people are shocked on the other side that they have been playing religion all through. It's simple. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will worship a God you know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I think I should stop it here. Uh, thank you for those who joined live. And I know this video always circulates thereafter and it's going to be a blessing to somebody. Maybe I should just end by praying for folks that are here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you may, the viewers that are live right now and those that are going to view it later because a prayer of faith can be repeated many times. Jesus repeated a prayer three times at the, at the Garden of Gethsemane. Prayer of faith can be repeated. I pray in the name of Jesus for my friends that are online, them that I see and them that I don't, that you may fill them with the Holy Ghost with a greater measure. Let every mountain 
that was before them, whatever mountain is before them, be leveled because of the Spirit of God. Father, give us that identity that makes us Christian, the Holy Spirit, that is being truly born again, being renewed in the mind by the Spirit of God, being changed every day, sanctified every day by the power of the Spirit, that is to, to be truly born again by the Spirit, Jesus said. Father, I pray that all those that are watching me right now, that you may fill them with the Holy Ghost. I pray that you may anoint them and give them that measure and that desire to, to be baptized of the fire. Now they may, they may have the gifts of the Holy Ghost and the fruits that can be plucked by the world and people around them. We can eat of those fruits of the Holy Ghost and we, can, we have enough for others in the name of Jesus. Put that desire in them fill them in jesus name amen 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 that prayer is just a start i want to start the journey for you with the holy ghost thank you enjoy the holy ghost walk with the holy ghost and you shall never regret it here or thereafter when you go before the father and jesus confesses you i know him why he already had my deposit He's a bank. We are banks. The Lord, the Lord has put a deposit, his money. You know what I mean? So he can say, that's my bank. That's my bank. When you have that, you do not have to, to worry. When you die, angels will take you straight. And the Lord will confess that I know him. Do not play religion. It's dangerous. It's a waste of time. Thank you. God bless you. See you in the next life. Thank you.